Hi, this is Nancy Rolfsma with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. We are in our third lesson for the Sunset Over Dublin quilt. So that's the quilt that is behind me. This is a quilt that has 39 different blocks. There is a book available. You can go to our website, onpoint-tv, and that's where you can find all of my books. And this, like all the other books, is available as a print copy or as an ebook copy. With the ebook copy, you will get a download and then you can print it or you can see it on your tablet. This block is called the Clay's Choice Block and we'll be using this block to demonstrate how to make pinwheels. So I've got my pieces cut. I've got four two and a half blue, four two and a half of the background and I'm doing these with a the black background. Then two of the three inch in black background, two of the red in background, and four of the yellows. On the back of each of the yellows, I have drawn my diagonal line. I used my friction pen. This is a pen that is air, it is um, heat erasable, so it, that mark will go away. Again, if you cannot move your needle to the right, you will have to draw a second and third line that will be your sewing line. So those second and third line should be a scant quarter of an inch from the center line. I'm going to take these yellow ones and put them right sides together on top of the red and the background squares. And now I'm going to go to my sewing machine. So at my sewing machine, I have my needle positioned so that it is the scant quarter of an inch from the edge of the foot. I've left my guidelines for quilting still on here and that's okay because it's going to just kind of float over the top of it. I've started with my leader. You always want to use a leader, especially when you're working on blocks that have points. Otherwise your machine can have a tendency to take that down inside. So we'll be sewing a scant quarter of an inch on either side. So I'll uh, chain piece these, go to the end of that, Pick up another one, being sure my block is lined up as best as I can make it. We're not looking for perfect here because we just can't be. So we're just looking for really close. On the left hand side of all the blocks. Pick up my other leader. I usually work with two leaders at a time. So now I can run off onto that next leader, cut off the back, and I do want to cut these all apart. Now I'm going to be sewing a scant quarter of an inch on the other side. So on both sides. If you, again, if you're not able to move your needle, that means you will draw these sewing lines and then you will sew directly on those lines that you have sewn. Now they're all sewn together. Now back to my cutting table. Before I cut these in half, I do want to press them flat. Um, even though I've done the spray sizing first, I just like to have them really flat. And when I do that, you'll be able to see that friction pen disappear. So now it's like I didn't put that mark in there at all and I don't need the mark because I'm gonna obviously just mark, cut right down the middle. Taking a sharp pair of scissors, cut right down the middle. Yes, you could do this with a rotary cutter if you choose. I'm just not usually one to do it with a rotary cutter. And then be sure you go to your pressing solution in the pattern so you know where these are supposed to press to. So pulling up my pressing solution, I need to press these all to the yellow fabric, which might seem a little bit odd. You may have heard that, pre that quilters always press to the dark side, not the case. Lots of times we do. The reason that you would is because if, like I was, if let's assume I was doing this with a white and a black, if you do that with a black, 
you may be able to see, if you press toward the white of that block, you may be able to see a little bit of shadowing underneath it. So it's nice when you can to press to the dark side, but it is not a steadfast rule. Sometimes you may, and sometimes you might not. And for this block, I found the pressing solution to work a little bit better if I pressed all of them to the yellow. So I'm going to continue pressing these and then we'll get back together to start trimming these. So all of our half square triangles are made and I trimmed most of them already, but I want to show you how I trim these. In the first episode, I did show you a couple of different techniques and I'll use different techniques throughout so that you'll always be learning something new. For this technique, I'm going to use my block lock ruler. Now the block lock rulers are really nice and they are just perfect when you're needing to trim down half square triangles. This one happens to be the six and a half inch size. What I really like about it is it's six and a half inches, but that means I could do a one ha inch half square triangle all the way up to a six and a half inch. So it's going to cover a lot of the different blocks that you will make. For this quilt, they're all going to be two and a half, but I know that you'll make more quilts, so there'll be different sizes you'll need to make. So this is how this works. I like to take my block that I'm going to trim and make the seam be going away from me and then turn my block lock so that the block lock is upside down and that diagonal line there's a little groove in here that is going to set on top of the seam so that the ruler doesn't wobble and I like to have it facing away from me then I'm going to trim on the right and the top then put a little pressure down on the block as you spin it around sliding this down to two and a half inches. Achoo! Excuse me. Now I'm going to trim on the right and the top of that block. So let's do that one more time. So start with the block going, the seam going away from you. Now put the block lock on so it's upside down. The words are upside down. As you start, trim the right and top put pressure on the ruler as you spin it around, then it slides to the other side to measure to two and a half inches. The other blocks that we've made so far, I've showed you how I piece them in rows. With this block, you're going to piece it a little bit differently. You want to piece the center first as a pinwheel. So it's always hard to get it there. All right, that's first row and then the second row. And you want to piece the pinwheel section first. It will make it easier to do a little trick in the middle of it to eliminate the bulk of the seams. So to show you how to do this, I actually want to work with some bigger pieces and some bigger seams so that you'll be able to easily, more easily see what I'm doing. So keep in mind, when you're doing a pinwheel block, you're actually making two that are exactly the same. So this one is exactly the same as that one, and then this gets spinned around, and then voila, you have your pinwheel. Now I sewed with an extra wide seam allowance so that you'll be able to see the little trick I do. When piecing these together, you want to try to make it so that the point on this matches up with the point on this one. So take your block, flip it over, and take a pin and find that point on the first top block. So right there. So if you look to the back front side, you can see I found that half that point. Now take the neat pin and put it right into the point on the bottom one. Now play with the block a little bit. Oops, it slipped out. Let's try that again. There. Play with the block, kind of positioning it, moving it back and forth because you want it the pin to be straight and then you want the top to be even. So going around, oops. I know what happened. That one's going in the wrong direction. There. Now I can put my pin in to secure it. Okay. Then I can come to the left side. I can put a pin in there. Now on a little block, you probably don't need to put the pins at the beginning at the end, but on the larger the block, the more fabric I recommend that you do. Now going to my sewing machine, I'm going to sew this with, again, a rather wide seam allowance. I'm going to leave my um, needle in that position, but I know I'm just going to slide it over top. And as I get to the center, there is that intersection right there. Now I really need to have that um, the seam kind of pass right over that intersection. Let's get that seam to fall flat. 
So that wasn't quite a wide enough seam allowance, but for this it'll make sense. Get to the end, use my leader. And cut that off and come back to the table. So I've sewn, I've gone as close to that intersection as I can. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be pretty close. The seams are going in opposite directions. This one's going to the right, this one's going to the left. You'll also see that the seams continue in the same direction. And that's what, when I do the pressing solution for you, I actually include the arrows. So you're going to try to get your seams to actually go in the direction of the arrows. And on the pattern, you'll see a marking like this, where I actually have this going in a circle. That means I want you to seam separate that. And this is how you do that. To seam separate, using your seam ripper, you want to take out the few stitches that are here. So this is the last seam that I sewed. This would be the seam that sewed the two blocks together. I'm going to take out just one or two of the stitches. And I don't cut them, I just take them out so there is actually a little tail hanging out there. Then flip the block over and do the same thing on the other side. Now with a smaller block and a regular seam allowance, sometimes you don't even have to pluck it out. It'll just kind of fall out as you do the next step. So now I can open it up. And as I open it up, it almost blossoms out all by itself. So let me move this out of the way so I can get to my ironing board. Right. So there is my seam and it's separated. So as I put my iron down, get it really flat. Want to do it from the top side too. Oh, this one turned out just right. Every once in a while, it really works out. So from the front, you can see that those match up pretty nicely. You can't get too much closer than that. And on the back, it kind of creates this teeny tiny little pinwheel going around. You'll also notice, if everything has gone according to plan, that the seams actually rotate all the way around. Now here is a word of warning. If you do this and all oh, that seamed and that seam went this way or that seam, sometimes you might not be able to separate it in the middle. But even if you are able to separate it in the middle and maybe this seam was going that way or that one, don't go backwards. We try not to go backwards in quilting. So the only time I'm going to take my seam ripper and take a seam out that I have sewn is if it's a catastrophe. If it's a, oh, it's not exactly right, yeah, that's okay. I'm going to deal with it at another time. Some people like to joke about, can you see it on a galloping horse? Well, I'm not going to put a quilt on a galloping horse, so I couldn't tell you what that's going to look like. But I can suggest that if you take that block that is really worrying you, oh, it's just not close enough, take that block, put it in the middle of your bed, then go to the foot of the bed, and from the foot of the bed, look down and see if you can really see that. Is that little error going to bother you so much that you won't be able to sleep under that quilt? I'm willing to bet not. Now, I know there's a few of you out there that is. That's going to bother you so much. Well, okay, take the time. I'm not going to do it. I'm always looking for my blocks to be nice, not perfect. Can't do them perfect. So I'm going to put the red and yellow together into a pinwheel, and then I'll come back and show you how to piece the rest of the block. So my pinwheel block is pieced, and I want to show you the back side so you can see the pressing. And it, all of the seams go in the same direction, creating that little pinwheel that I just love to see. And whatever direction these seams are going, that's how I determine the pressing solution for the rest of the block. So since this seam is going up, this seam had to go down. Now, it does break one of my little rules. I like the idea of pressing to the point of least resistance. On this block, least resistance is going up so that this seam is actually going out the other way. It's not going on top of another. But for the pressing to work, it needed to come down. So these two came down. And when you look at the back side of these, it would be the same idea. So I've already pieced the top and bottom row. Now I just need to, oops, got to flip that back around. Yep, there it is. Now I need to just piece these together. So I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and piece this onto the pinwheel. So I always like to 
match up my scenes and pin them in place. Some people don't. If you can get them to match and not pin them, more power to you, you do that. I can't get them to match as nicely as I would like them to match if I don't pin them. So there's one. Taking off my leaders. And then the second one. Butt them together, right together. They're snuggling there nicely. Put a pin in under the seam so it's not so bulky. And then that one. And I will sew these both on the two sides before I press them. I'm going to my ironing board. My pressing solution says to press these toward the pinwheel. So that's what I'll do. So if I start with the iron on the right hand little row and then kind of push it up, Pulling out with my left hand, that'll get that seam to open up. Always patient with my pressing. If you haven't noticed how patient I am with my pressing, I take my time. I'm not going to just put it down and pick it up. I'm always going to stop it, give it a little steam, let it cool off a little bit, then come to the other side and make sure that I've got that completely. And I'll show you what I mean by completely. It didn't happen. So right here, right there, that seam did not press completely. So I've got to work it from the top side, give it some steam, let it cool a little bit, uh, and then go back to the um, pressing solution. There's my block. Now I can put these rows down, flipping them over. And with my pressing solution worked, my seams are going in opposite directions. So I'm going to pin at each one of the intersections. And I think you've got this general idea. I'll bring this back all pressed and then we'll trim it together. So I have it all pressed, all sewn together and I want to show you how I press this. Oop, this little guy flipped out of his place. It's not where he belongs and they must be where they belong. So I like to press it from the back side. Again, putting my um, iron down and then pressing. Oops, nope, I'm supposed to press toward the blocks is the better pressing solution. Now there's always a million pressing solutions. I just tried to give you the ones that I think work best. So let me actually, let's test this one. All right, this one is pressed. This side I pressed toward the center. This one I pressed toward the outside. So let's see here. That's not very bulky. Um, that one's a smidge bulky. Now on this one, that one's kind of bulky and that one's not. You know what? I think I should press these to the outside. So I'm going to switch this one. And when you get the pattern, it'll be right. I'll have made the pressing solution so it'll be to the outside. So check me. If you happen to get it and the clay's choice block does not have it pressed to the outside, that means I did not do my edits right, but we will. So keep in mind, the book is available for purchase. It's got 39 different blocks and the layout solution for a twin, a, a crib, a twin, and a queen size quilt and it will be set on point like that. So my block is finished. Now I want to do some of that trimming that I like to do. So first seeing the size the block is, so that's a smidge over eight and a half. And this one is smidge over eight and a half. So that means that I can trim just a tad, but never past the point. So that yellow point is going to go on the quarter inch of my ruler and I can trim that little teeny bit off there. Now, some people have told me that I trim too much. What's it matter if it's only a smidge off, Nancy? It'll all work. You're right. It will. And if you don't want to trim them, I am certainly not going to sit in your house and tell you you have to. I like to trim them. I like for them to be as square as possible when I start. And then everything just seems to work out better in the whole setting solution. So totally up to you. Would it make a big difference? I don't know. I always trim. So I assume it makes a big difference because I always do it. There. There is my clay's choice block. So the next block that we deal with, we'll be working with piecing a block in quadrants. More half square triangles. I'll show you some different techniques for doing that. I'm also going to show you a different way to get your 
quarter inch seam allowance. You just always want to learn something new. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notifications button so that you'll get a notification when we either put up a new video or if we go live. We do live videos on our YouTube for members and non-members. If you're a member, that means that you can send me questions and you can ask me questions during the live video. And there's a Facebook page. On Facebook, we do a lot of sharing of the quilts that the viewers have made. So be sure you check that out too. And I'll see you next time.